And is there any key message that you give to anybody watching this interview or listening in? Any key points you would like to encourage people to to keep in mind when they're thinking about the issues that affect them or what the, the issues that they might want to take action on? Yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing is to realize that you can accomplish something. You know, I know sometimes it feels, you just feel powerless, that you're one small person in this world of big corporations and big evil people and big media companies and so on. There's just nothing you can do. But the fact is, a lot of the reason it seems like that is because people feel powerless. People are afraid to do anything. You know, for a long time I felt, I watched the news and all I saw was this stuff, this corporate propaganda and this kind of anti-activism attacks and I thought, you know, the news media was just inevitably biased against us, that there was just no hope that the only solution was to create alternative news streams. Now at the P-Trip I found, it's not that the news media is inevitably biased against us, it's that, you know, reporters like all of us are just kind of lazy. You know, they report the stories that people give them and there are huge companies that are willing to write up stories for them and hand them to them on a silver platter, so all they have to do is type them up. You know, of course they're going to do that. And it turned out when we did the same thing, when we started writing press releases and we started going to reporters and pitching them stories, they were just as happy to write about us as they were about Coca-Cola. And so, you know, because I had believed so long that change was impossible, it precluded me from taking any actions that could have caused that change. And so I think the first step for everyone out there is just to believe that you can accomplish something. Because once you believe that, you know, you're half the way to act actually doing something. Yeah, well, as you know, it's very easy to go to other countries and criticize them. It's a lot harder to look at your own country and point out what's wrong here. But it's ironic that Hillary Clinton is giving this speech this week when just in a couple days, the U.S. House of Representatives is expected to vote on the infamous bill that I've been on the show talking about many times that would allow the government to shut off websites here at home and censor them from American users. So yeah, they, you know, not just the FCC, but actually the U.S. Congress is planning to vote on this bill. And despite a million people around the world trying to get Hillary Clinton to speak out against it, she's remained silent. Yeah, he was dedicating his life to building a world, a nation at least, but a world that was as idealistic as, as he was. And, and he was impatient with us, and he was disappointed with us, with all of us, as we moved through this fight. And, and he, as he grew impatient, he, he called on people to do more. And, and it is incredibly hard for all of us who were close to him to accept the recognition that maybe if we had done more, maybe if we had done more, this wouldn't have seemed so bleak to him. Maybe if we had stopped this prosecution, and I received an email from JSTOR four days before Aaron died uh, from the president of JSTOR announcing, celebrating that JSTOR was going to release all of these journal articles to anybody around the world who wanted access, exactly what Aaron was fighting for. And uh, I didn't have time to send it to Aaron. I, I was on, I was traveling, but I, I look forward to seeing him again. I had just seen him the week before and celebrating that this is what had happened. So all of us think there are a thousand things we could have done. A thousand things we could have done and we have to do. Because Aaron Swartz is now an icon, an ideal, He's what we will be fighting for, all of us, for the rest of our lives. But that's kind of the point. We won this fight because everyone made themselves the hero of their own story. Everyone took it as their job 
to save this crucial freedom. They threw themselves into it. They did whatever they could think of to do. They didn't stop to ask anyone for permission. You remember how Hacker News Reader spontaneously organized this boycott of GoDaddy over their support of SOPA? Nobody told them they could do that. A few people even thought it was a bad idea. It didn't matter. The senators were right. The internet really is out of control. But if we forget that, if we let Hollywood rewrite the story so it was just big company Google who stopped the bill, if we let them persuade us we didn't actually make a difference, if we start seeing it as someone else's responsibility to do this work, and it's our job just to go home and pop some popcorn and curl up on the couch to watch Transformers, well then next time, they might just win. Let's not let that happen.